Hey, Dallas here. I'm gonna make a quick video to demonstrate to you the power of intonation and completely transforming the meaning of a phrase. And the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take four sentences, these random sentences I just came up with right now, and I'm gonna say them in four different moods. And the moods are gonna be declarative, surprise, questioning, and doubt. And notice how when I say these exact same words in different intonation, a completely different meaning comes out of it. So first, let's do declaration. A declaration is just a statement of fact. I'm just telling you how it is, right? I'm talking to you in the camera. He's never been to Tokyo. You're an amazing cook. That's a crocodile. Notice how I'm doing the exact same intonation each time. That's a crocodile. Starting high, that's a crocodile. You're an amazing cook. He's never been to Tokyo. Wah, 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 wah. So I start, wah, wah, wah. He's never been to Tokyo. You're an amazing cook. That's a crocodile, All right? So you notice when you declare in English, your intonation is just falling down. Now I'll compare this to a uh, delightful surprise. Maybe in each of these situations I'm surprised by it. I'm like, ooh, it's delightful, wow. And I say, I'm talking to you in the camera. He's never been to Tokyo. You're an amazing cook. That's a crocodile, right? So what's going on here? I'm saying, da -da, da -da. a little bit of a little tail hook at the end. Da -da -da. That's a crocodile. You're an amazing cook. He's never been to Tokyo. I'm talking to you in the camera. All right, of course, you can get really exaggerated with it depending on your level of expressiveness. Um, now, this one, it goes up and tails off at the end. Compare that to the intonation if I were asking this as a question. I say, I'm talking to you in the camera. You're an amazing cook. He's never been to Tokyo. That's the crocodile. Slight difference, but you can hear it. When I was surprised, I was like, I would say, that's a crocodile. That's a crocodile. Wah, 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 wah. Whereas question, I kind of start flat and then slope up at the end. Wah, wah, versus wah, wah, wah. So listen, I'm talking to you in the camera. He's never been to Tokyo. You're an amazing cook. That's a crocodile. And right now I'm exaggerating, but I'll say it normal. I'm talking to you in the camera. He's never been to Tokyo. That's a crocodile. You're an amazing cook. Final one, doubt. When I'm expressing doubt in English, very similar to uh, questioning and surprise, my voice goes up, but once again, subtle difference. Imagine I'm saying these things, but I don't really believe what I'm saying. So I'm talking to you in the camera. Do -do -do. So halfway through, talking to you in the camera. He's never been to Tokyo. You're an amazing cook. That's a crocodile. So what's going on here is I'm going up just like in the question, but then I'm flattening out at the end. So the upness isn't sloping up as much as Usually I'm making the on the most important part of the sentence that I find the most dubious. So I'm talking to you in a camera versus if I said I'm talking to you in a camera. So notice how the difference is I'm putting the intonation both on you. That means I'm doubtful the fact that I'm talking to you in a camera. Whereas if I put it on the camera, then I'm doubtful of the camera, right? Or we put even earlier, I'm talking to you in a camera. You know, so he's never been to Tokyo. You're an amazing cook. Or you're an amazing cook. You're an amazing cook. You're an amazing cook. That's a crocodile. That's a crocodile. Wah, 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 wah. All right, so quick review of each one. Stick for each sentence. Let's do a declaration, surprise, question, and doubt for each sentence. Declaration. Uh, I'm talking to you in the camera. Surprise. I'm talking to you in the camera. Question. I'm talking to you in the camera. 
Doubt. Talking to you in the camera. Declaration. He's never been to Tokyo. Surprise. He's never been to Tokyo? That's a question, sorry. Surprise. He's never been to Tokyo. Question. He's never been to Tokyo? Doubt. He's never been to Tokyo. Declaration. You're an amazing cook. Surprise. You're an amazing cook. Question. You're an amazing cook? Doubt. You're an amazing cook? Declaration. That's a crocodile. Surprise. That's a crocodile. Question. That's a crocodile? Doubt. That's a crocodile? Boom. So, subtle differences, completely different meanings, all because of the intonation. Question for you now is whatever target language you're trying to focus on, see if you can hear what the different intonation patterns are in that language. See if you can categorize them by mood uh, or by some other kind of category based on the culture. It's gonna be different per group of people. And when you can tone in or tune in to the intonation, to the melody of your target language, it'll allow you to express yourself more freely, uh, sound just like native speakers, connect with them on a deeper level and also allow you to understand more because this intonation has now been automated in your brain. All right, so check it out. Let me know what you come up with and we'll do more videos like this in the future.